Hi everyone and welcome. It's great having you here. This is kind of a mixtape, as it were. I'm going to be doing a couple things here. So of course, I'm making some inhalers. I was not feeling so well recently and put these together for myself, but I'm happy to share them with you as well. I will put links in the description and up in the little I at the top of this video where you, if you move your mouse up there and you see the little letter I and click it, you'll see a couple of links there to how I infuse my cast, my camphor and my uh, menthol crystals uh, in case you need a little bit of help with that. And I find this better than most things that you can buy in the store, at least for me. Uh, it's simple, it's natural, and it works. Now these are plastic inhalers, and you may think to yourself, well, I thought, Patrick, you were going eco-friendly. That's absolutely right. There are not a lot of eco-friendly devices like this, unless you get a metal one. They do have some that are aluminum uh, that you can use and refill. But quite frankly, this is something that you stick in your near your nose. And this is one of the few times when I might suggest that you not recycle. <laughs> because after all, you use an inhaler when you're ill most of the time. Or maybe you just enjoy sniffing on them. I don't know. I do. <laughs> you can put just essential oils you like in them and just inhale them at night, maybe to help you relax. Use a little lavender, right? But this is for breathing easier when you have cold, congestion, coughs, those sort of things. And I find it quite helpful. And in this, I do add a bit of eucalyptus essential oil because I find that that is therapeutic and it really does bring the camphor and the menthol together very nicely into a trio of just beautiful nasal clearing goodness. And I call it New Day because it is like a new day when you can breathe again, when you haven't been able to. And if you've been there, you know what I mean. The second part of this video is going to be about me uh, casking a few of my tinctures, which I've done videos on in the past. And again, there will be links to the casking uh, in the description and above if you click that little I. Anyway, that being said, uh, I just, I normally do this and I don't film things like casking. It's just something that I do. Now, why do I do it, you might ask? Well, because I know for a fact that using very high proof alcohol for certain herbs brings out more of the constituents. I also know that it can be rather harsh if you're drinking it straight, which I would never suggest you do. Add it to water or milk or something because the alcohol, it's after all, it's straight alcohol, right? But still, that alcohol taste may be offensive to some. It may be something they just don't like. And now, while this won't get rid of that, it won't get rid of the alcohol taste, it milds it a bit. That is just a term meaning that it gives it a easier swallow, so to speak. Less burning and just more of the flavor of the herb in question. Uh, in the case of these two that I'm doing today, one is the Stinging Nettle, which is my most popular here locally. A matter of fact, I just sold another 50 of them recently. Those go really quick. And so I'm always adding new to that. As a matter of fact, I have three casks of it. I And the other one that I've done here is Elderberry. And generally, I will cask for three to six months 
that's generally enough. Now, as far as actually making the tinctures themselves, you jar up your herbs, you add your alcohol, and I've seen variations from other people on how they do this. I do it a very specific way because I know that it works. I don't know that the other methods work. Those people claim they do, so I have no reason to uh, reject that or to dispute it. But I do it a certain way because I know it works for me. And I uh, put mine in alcohol for three to six months before they ever even go into the casks for milding. All right. And some people do it for a month. I've heard of some people just do it for overnight. <laughs> I do it the way I do it because I do it that way. Uh, and I believe that based on what I've read, based on my understanding, that a longer tincture time like that gives you more of a breakdown of the cell wall of the herbs in use, and that you get a much better distribution of those constituents in the alcohol or some people use glycerin uh, and that works fine if you're, so that works really well for specific things like if you're making a syrup like an elderberry syrup for instance this is an elderberry tincture in alcohol so this is something different now you're going to get different constituents depending on what you use there are things out there that need a little bit of water to get the water based uh, or the water-soluble constituents out of something. Some things require alcohol. It, it just varies by the, by the herb. Do your research. Get a good book. And if I can, I'll put a link to a couple of books in the description that I think are good and that might be helpful to you. And I love making these, and I just wanted to share this with you all. I want to thank you all for being patient with me while I've been a little lax lately. I'm feeling much better and I'm just really glad to be back with you. Have a fantastic day everyone and I look forward to seeing you back soon. Oh and by the way I almost said goodbye without saying we're almost at 3,000 and boy do I have some fun ideas for a new drawing. Stay tuned. Bye everyone.